Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at a digital board game known as Valor and Victory. For those of you that have seen, you know, games like Wars Across the World, or at least game engines like that, I'm, I'm guessing that this is going to be quite similar. Um, again, it could be something completely unexpected, but that's probably what is going to, to be happening here. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, some interesting stuff just like right off the bat, right off the, the bat here is there is a scenario editor right, you know, right there in the beginning of the game. If you decide you want to make your own World War II scenario or potentially, you know, something a little bit different, that's certainly a place to check out. Um, there's also multiplayer. I'm pretty sure this is going to be like PBM hot seat style. Hey, how's it going, Cobra? Um, so that's another option. But today we're going to jump into the new game setting. Now we do have a American sector from the Battle of Normandy uh, style game where there's a several scenarios. Well, more than quite a few. In fact, we'll jump in here and I'll show you guys. Um, we've got a bunch of different scenarios, but no campaign as such. Again, this is sort of a digital board game. So you have to think of it like that, um, especially like I said, if you played Wars Across the World or anything uh, similar to that. Um, there's a few others. I think it's called lock and load digital yeah on the steam store that do similar things so today we're going to play the alamo at saint marigli as the allies so essentially we have to defend this particular village from repeated german attacks but i also want to show you guys that we've got user created scenarios and i'm hoping that this gets filled up with some pretty awesome stuff fairly soon um we've also got a, just a basic tutorial to kind of get started in the game and we've got a british sector as well as an american sector now, to be very clear, like if you want to play as the Germans, you can do that. That's that's fine. Um, doesn't matter if you do like the last mission here of the quote unquote campaign first. It's totally up to you. Uh, again, if you want to make it a hot seat game with friends or if you want to play by email, that's all possible. So let's jump in the Alamo at St. Marigli at, as the Americans. Let's jump right in here guys and you can see quite a lot of germans on that outer rim there it's going to be their turn first now i have not jumped into the tutorial i typically don't as you guys know um, but what i'm going to do here is kind of go um just turn by turn there's typically phases in games like this and that command phase yep so it's probably going to be command move shoot etc um, we might even have a return fire phase eight we're going to be safe did some return fire here with an 11 we should be able to do some damage maybe not how's it going bostava all right move to defensive fire phase So unfortunately, that guy is suppressed, as far as I can tell. Well, we might not have much in terms of suppressive fire ability here. Allied defensive fire. And maybe this is because it's currently um, their turn. So we need to actually to do Overwatch, it needs to be our turn. All right, let's go ahead and end it. I don't want to get rid of that. And we just got rid of the one of the most important things here. Luckily, this is kind of just going to... This will probably bring up uh, that screen again. Let's take a look here. Scenario details, basic constructions, uh, hide action menu. Yeah, there we go. So that's one good thing about these like sort of digital board games. They're pretty easy to work with. Like I haven't, you know, done a tutorial or anything. And I already knew that if I head up here, probably find a way out of uh, that particular situation. Um, but in any case, let's go ahead and end the turn here. It's the AI assault phase. No doubt they're going to try to charge this unit here. All right, we're both pinned, as a matter of fact. And they did destroy our guy with a charge. All right, it's going to be the ally turn here. 
So we need to see what the actual um, stages are. It's going to be an allied command phase first. So this is likely uh, just movement or potentially even the commands down here. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking over here. Swap weapons between selected units. That's pretty cool. So we can swap maybe from the rifles to the grenades is what I would guess. And this allows us to split into multiple stacks or multiple squads. We don't want to do that. We want to keep these guys together for the most part. All right, here we go. The fire phase. Get some smoke here. Let's just take a look at their fire phase or their distance. is going to be three and six. One, two, three tiles. Hmm... All right, you know what? They've they've beaten me. We're going to jump into the tutorial phase. How about that? Um, I played this as the Germans, and we could fire right away. So let's jump into the tutorial, and I guess we'll all kind of find out together. Typically, these digital board games are pretty much the same. Um, you know, there's like a fire phase, a movement phase, a command phase, maybe a counter phase, uh, maybe an air war phase. I don't think this one will have the air war but let's just jump in here. I just want to find out how to fire because yesterday I was shooting down uh, allies left and right. All right, so let's take a look here. Yeah, so here we go, the command phase. So it's going to be command, fire, move, and opportunity fire. That's that's different. That's pretty cool. Uh, defensive fire and advance. The advance allows us to like charge enemy units, things like this, although we might be able to do that in the move and opportunity fire phase. So games are played in a series of turns. Yeah, we know this. First phase. Okay, yeah. Infantry squads are located in the same hex uh, or transfer support weapons. So again, this is from going to like a rifle to a machine gun. We're also going from a rifle to, you know, grenades, things like that. And this button highlights the line of sight. All right, that makes sense. We can also select enemy units and click this button. And I believe we get their line of sight as well. So let's left click. Over the stack of units to select and perform actions on. Try and split the infantry unit into two squads, two half squads. Hmm. So I see there's like, there's three squads, I believe, and there are two squads and a machine gun. Once you've selected a stack, you can select individual units to perform actions on here. A red border around the unit means it has been selected. Okay. So maybe if we click this uh, split button now. Ah, all right. Select individual units to perform actions on here. A red border around that unit means it's selected. So I wonder if we can actually separate this guy. Maybe not for a movement phase. Um, can we just completely separate him from the squad? I'm curious. No, I don't think so. All right. So let's go ahead and hit next. Fire phase. You may fire with any of your eligible units. Select your units to fire and click on an enemy target in your line of sight. You may opt to fire smoke in lieu of an attack with any eligible AFVs. How's it going, Silagi? How you doing, man? Okay. Let's click this stack and click on the British unit. See what I mean? It seems pretty straightforward. Just left click and left click. I'm not sure why we couldn't do that in the scenario. Okay, this we definitely want to take a look at. So um, this is going to be the move phase. It's a little strange to have the move phase as third, at least in the games I've played, um, digital board games, etc. It's usually the second or first phase. So this is different. Like we shoot first, then we move. All right. Okay. I got to get used to that. Uh, rotates the selected vehicle, reverses selected vehicle. That's right. We're going to be getting vehicles eventually. And let's take a look here. Infantry units may use a special form of assault movement. Infantry units using assault movement have their movement points 
the reduction in movement points is applied before the unit moves or before any other reductions are applied to units to any other unit's movement points when an infantry unit uses assault movement it gains a plus one cover modifier so i guess that's because they're like rushing to the point as quickly as they can but that's pretty cool all right i can get used to that uh so left click the stack yeah once again seems it's pretty straightforward in terms of the movement I'm not sure why we had that difficulty um in the starting stages of that scenario so we're gonna head back to the campaign Again, we're going to jump into the Battle of Normandy, American Sector. And again, for those of you just arriving, we have numerous things we can go into. The British Sector, um, as well as the user-created scenarios. And since this particular game has a scenario creator in it, even you can do this uh, and put it up on the Steam Workshop for others to play. So I'm going to jump in. Maybe we should just play as the uh, Axis, because we've learned how to play with them fear that if we play as the Americans, uh, maybe we're not going to be able to shoot again. So let's try out the Axis here. Um, we're going to be the bad guys at St. Marigli. The Alamo at St. Marigli, I should say. All right, guys. Command phase. So we cannot move during the command phase. That's right. It's the shooting phase or the fire phase, then the movement phase. Here we go. It's a miss. And I'm guessing that since we're behind this building, uh, we would also not be able to hit this guy. Again, this is where we have multiple stacks in this unit. So I wonder um, if maybe next turn we could try and split these guys. Shoot, move, then communicate. Exactly. Came here to chill. This is a good game to chill to for sure, Silagi. It's not really, you know, again, these digital board games are pretty calming. Um, it's not constant action going around. You could take your time with this. I'm having a coffee, you know. So it's just one of those games that you can definitely relax with. Um, and if you like World War II, even better, right? So, okay. Let's hope that I'm correct here. Yes. We do have the movement phase. So I'm going to try to get in this building. I'm just assuming that the building is going to be uh, kind of a good place to go. Of course, getting to the building, we are going to take some fire, but thankfully it missed us. And I believe we could even possibly go into um, an assault. Maybe not this turn, but maybe next turn. Okay, they pinned us. Not what I was looking for. Okay, guys, so we've pretty much shut up in the buildings over here in the southwest of town as the Germans. I'm hoping this is going to be kind of sufficient to, to keep them at bay, as it were. Yeah, I'm really, like, I always get surprised, frankly, when people um, stop in to watch this kind of game. I'm gonna, I'll be totally honest with you. It's, to me, not my style of game. I like something with a little more action. Um, it's just, but I get it. Like, I get it, especially if I was, like, you know, maybe on a trip or something or in the countryside where there was no actual uh, internet access um, to play kind of a board game, you know. But I think, I'm not sure. I'm the kind of person that, like, if I'm going to play a board game, I want to play the board game. I don't want to play the digital board game. I just, I don't, I don't see a lot of, I, I don't understand a lot of interest in this genre is what I'm saying. Um, I play it for you guys though. Let's see. All right, so advance and assault. Oh, so we might still be able to try that assault as a matter of fact. Um, let's see. Hmm. Got a lot of guys here. I'd rather take the risk here. Fingers crossed. Oh, that's not looking good. We did destroy them, but I think it was um, it was merely a question of numbers. I don't think we actually had sufficient men to destroy them here. So let me see. We're going to try to split these guys again. Oh, we can't split them on the assault phase. My apologies. How you doing, Eric? Good to see you, bud. Now, I split these two. I wonder if we can pull them out. Yes, we can. That's really cool. But then I accidentally pulled these guys too. All right, well, at least we know we can do that. It's interesting. 
Uh, we're going to switch here to the Allies command phase. Kind of like the... You can get used to the, uh, the music. You know, during the turns, it's kind of cool. Oh, look at that. We got Spears. That's Colonel Spears. For anybody that's watched Band of Brothers, you'll certainly know who that is. Good shooting, boys. Oh, our men lit them up and destroyed them. So you can see the dice rolls there completely worked in our favor. Pretty wonderful. Now we've got a defensive fire phase. I don't think that any of the enemy is actually in range of us, though. As you can see, they're pretty much spread out along the town. And in fact, I think if we stand any chance of beating them here, we're going to have to split that Bower unit and kind of start attacking. But we do get one shot here. Oh, we certainly will. Uh, take a look at the allies after. Oh, I, I think I do the allies. <laughs> Said that's something else. Um, but yeah, we will take a look after um, at the allies for sure. Again, these scenarios are very fast. Typically, some of them are much longer. Some of them have vehicles, etc. The one we're playing here is, is quite a small one, um, despite having a lot of action. All right, so defensive fire phase. Yeah, I think we're done with our defensive fire phase. Now, it's the allied advance and assault phase. So if they decide they want to push forward and potentially attack, that could occur. You also have to keep in mind that um, Spears there, if you look at that stack, he's got a lot of units in that stack. So just looking at the map itself can be a little deceptive where you're like, oh, maybe there's not many guys here. But that's a stack there. So we don't know how much is in there um, for the command phase. Yeah, we're not going to do much. Yeah, I don't think this is something we do during the command phase. I think it's something we do during the move phase. So here we go, our Axis fire phase. Again, we're going to open fire on Andrews. Hopefully we get luckier this time. Not bad. So he should be pinned, but I don't see the pinned marker there. So I'm guessing that it's one of the units in the stack that's pinned, but not all of them. That's, a, that's definitely important. Okay, we do get a shot at Spears, but as you can see, he's got that plus two cover in the tree line. Okay. All right, let's end that. It's our move phase. So this is where I really hope we can split these guys. Uh, let's take this guy away. Boom. Boom. Ouch. See how it goes. Oh, cheers. Yeah, nine likes. I guess people are liking this this uh, kind of game. Hmm. All right. I'm going to get this guy. In. Ah, damn it. I do that every time <laughs> with the going back. That's really frustrating. All right. We do this. I'm going to close. Go into this building. Grab Bauer. Go into that building. All right. There we go. It's very easy to kind of accidentally uh, click the unit. So I think that's about it. It's the allied defensive fire stage. I'm really hoping that those buildings help us out. And they did hit the guy that stayed on the road, of course. Advance and assault phase. Okay. We could go for spears, but again, with a stack like that, it's just not wise. Okay. Um, I think that's good enough. Just kind of move the guys around a bit and continue uh, providing cover fire. What else can you do in a fight like this? Am I right? Yeah, Dave, yeah. I, this is definitely one of those games that has a very, very specific... It's a niche of a niche, basically. So it's like, you gotta be a strategy gamer, and you also have to be a strategy board gamer, you know, and, and a combination of the two. 
Um, I, I always get really shocked at how many people show up to the streams when I do this, um, Wars Across the World. Um, I haven't yet done the Lock and Load digital games, but they're very similar. And I always get surprised. There's always people that really enjoy this and to a, to a great degree. Like, I guess it certainly applies also to the, um, the older gamer crowd. Five. Took some casualties. Hello, Dave. Got an ad. <laughs> Here we go. Yep, took some casualties. Again, we though we had a stack there, so you can see we still have a rifle division that's alive. So we should be able to hit Spears. Ooh. And Spears is a very important uh, squad, squad level American commander. And if you've seen Band of Brothers, you've certainly seen uh, the actor that plays him. How about that? Let's fire again with this guy. Okay, not bad. A few casualties. It looks like two casualty points inflicted which in that massive group, I'm not sure it's going to really count for much. What I'm most frustrated by is our MG37 and our MG34 are pretty much just pinned down on the street here. Not much we can do about that at the moment. Um, I am gonna fire at Andrews, but again, we have to keep in mind, he's got that plus three defensive uh, phase. Yeah, scenario editor looks awesome. And what Dave's talking about is this game has a fully fledged scenario editor um, within it. So if you wanna make your own battle, you wanna make your own map, you can do it. And you can offer it to other players of the game on the Steam Workshop. It's a great way to give back. It really is. Damn it. We've expelled just about every round. Yep, that's about it. It's the allied advance and assault phase. And again, Spears could certainly try and charge these buildings and would probably break through. But he might not go for it. How's it going, Eric Elder? All right, our machine gun rallied up. It's back to our command phase here. We're going right into the fire phase, and I think these machine guns can really pay off here. Um, let's focus. Ooh, can't hit Andrews. So I guess the building as well as the sort of uh, brush cover here is making him a really hard target to see. And again, in this game, fire phase comes before movement, so I will open up. Could have gone better. Uh, I'm definitely gonna fire across and hit Andrews here. And in this case, our line of sight does not reach the paratrooper uh, division anyway. So let's open up. Missed again, man. All right, let's keep hitting Spears. It's looking rough for the Reich. You know, they call this battle the Alamo for the Allies, but they've got an additional unit over here. We've already wiped out two of their divisions. I think they might outnumber us on this battlefield. Sometimes the dice just don't, don't go with you, folks. What can you do? All right, um, let's end it there. I think Bauer... Nope. So what I'm going to do here... I'm actually going to try to sort of um, strengthen this this particular location. Uh, one of the ways we can do that is take Bauer here and just throw him into the building. So that's definitely something I want to do. Um, and let's get these guys out of the road if they're willing to move. Although they just rallied this turn, so it doesn't look like they're going to move. Yeah, they just rallied this turn. They want nothing to do with us. We could even exit the map with selected units, which is pretty cool. So there is a way to try to, like, escape if you think you're going to lose, to escape with what you've got left. Okay. It's the Allied Defensive Fire Stage. They're sure to open up on the Rifle Division here. Snake Eyes! Snake Eyes is a killer in this game. <laughs> Snake Eyes is a killer. All right, it's the advance and assault phase, but it's our advance and assault phase. And again, I'm not charging Spears. He's in the woods. He's, uh, he's got a huge stack of men here. Um, what I can try to do, if these guys are willing to move, get into the cover there of the bushes. 
And I might actually... Yeah, I'll, I'll get closer to Andrews here. He's also got a stack. But these guys are prepared, and we can even switch over to our uh, grenades. Try to use those. Uh, it's uh, reasonable, I guess. Oh, Andrews, you gotta work on that aiming there. Spears following up with a flanking shot, destroying that unit for my trash talking. Man, that's rough. Thank you, Mark. Squads, not divisions. Sometimes when we're narrating, we're uh, the brain's only like 20% there, 25% there about. <laughs> All right, so let's take the squads. Um, again, I want to move into the building. It is our defensive fire phase, so we should be able to hit Andrews from here. But then again, he's in that building. He did just charge that unit. We're going to try and uh, get some vengeance for our boys that were just taken out. And we'll fire at Spears. Again, he gets that plus two defense. Really frustrating. Pinned. Again, not Spears himself. Just a few units under his command. Uh, just one casualty point inflicted. And really, I don't think this refers to casualties as in lost troops. It's just a pinned unit. Archfire. Ah, that's good to know. Thank you, man. You can't move a unit if you shot before. And that is even more kind of like uh, something I need to work with because with the um, Wars Across the World engine, it's the other way around. It's you move and then you fire. So here I've got to get used to that. Like if I'm going to shoot with one of these guys, can't move that turn, but we can still attack with them that turn, right? In other words, we can get close enough to perform an assault. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's proceed here. What do you guys want to take a look at next? You guys want to see the American, um, it's not really a campaign, but the American group of scenarios, the British group of scenarios. That's kind of what you have to choose from. Now, given, I think each of them have like 10 or 15 scenarios. So there's a lot to choose from there, as well as the scenario creator. Wow, thank you for all the likes, guys. I really appreciate that. do it okay we can't move if we fire all right i'm not gonna fire with him in that case i will still fire at spears tank says dave flute all right did I ever try the print and play tabletop? This is based on no, I, I, not at all. Um, so the funny thing is I've done um, independent public relations for a few companies that do these kind of games. Um, it's notoriously difficult to find YouTubers that are willing to play them. But I know that there's a very, very deep and old school kind of... Um, you know, community surrounding them, um, that people that really love these games. It's not so much that I wouldn't play them, it's just that I was never introduced to this style of gaming. I got introduced to this style of gaming through work, you know? Um, I did some work for, uh, you know, uh, Philippe Thibault's Avalon Digital, and he had these style of games, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's a new idea for sure. All right. Hey, Mad Maximus, my son. Um, yes, I do. I do. I, I probably should stream it soon, but it's kind of like an off and on thing. I think when you've done YouTube for eight years with one genre, you, you get a little, a little bitter and a little, and a little bored of that genre at times. Um, there are still games out there that absolutely grab my attention and keep it. Um, and I'll be back to Shadow Empires, but it's kind of one of those things that, like, certainly requires a lot of time to get into it. Um, it's a very fun game, but you've got to be invested in it for a while. Uh, defensive fire phase. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt. Oh! Now, it's our advance and assault phase, and since we are finished here, we are going to attempt, even though this will not work against the great Commander Spears, we are going to attempt a charge here. So I'm going to move across, and no, I think because we have a heavy machine gun, we can't do two moves, so the only assault we would have been able to do would have been, like, right there from this location to one of these tiles around. 
All right, let's back up. By the way, just to jump back to that topic about the the digital, or sorry, the, the actual board game board games, I wanted to play the Roman one. I don't know what it's called, but it looks like this. And you get like a bunch of different tiles of different countries and like different maps. And you can kind of like do like a one, uh, you can like play against yourself, which I love because I'm an introvert. Um, and uh, I find it difficult to play with actual people. It's just the truth. I'm not going to lie to you guys. All right, let's jump into new game. And somebody wanted to take a look at tanks. I think all of you did. And also the British sector. For, so for those of you just arriving, these are the choices. So you've got the Battle of Normandy British sector, the Battle of Normandy American sector. And even though the user-created scenarios aren't currently there now, there might be a few, but you can fill this up on your own, going to the Steam Workshop and finding them. And then, of course, you'll get a bunch of those too. You can do um, play by email with a friend or you can do a hot seat game if you want and uh yeah so we're going to take a look here at the british sector and i think i should mention that in any of these particular sectors you can play as german squads if you so choose you don't have you're not restricted to playing as one or the other hold on i think we took the american sector by fault all right, there we go. So here's the British sector. Battle of Duver Radar Station. All right, but these guys want to see a tank. I haven't tried the tanks yet. Oh, after this looks pretty rough. After shaking off the initial shock of the airborne and beach landings, German units began to conduct organized counterattacks. German infantry and self-propelled guns of the 125th, 125th Panzer Grenadiers attempted to dislodge the British paratroopers from their defensive positions outside of Ranville. But the British paratroopers proved to be much more defiant than anticipated. The terrain the German attackers had to cross made a difficult proposition from the start, but the tenacity and effective anti-tank fire from the paratroopers ultimately sealed their fate. I feel like if I play um, as the uh, allies here, I'm going to get crushed. Let's look at other ones. I want to see if there's any more blatantly tank-oriented ones. In the afternoon, the move inland began to progress more rapidly, with the British forces spreading out in the villages and open countryside behind Gold Beach. The 6th Durham Light Infantry, accompanied by a squadron of Shermans, proceeded from Bazenville to Villiers-le-Sec. Once underway, however, they were set upon by tenacious German counterattack. A fierce engagement ensued, but the British units held strong, and the Germans retired, failing to stop the advance. So I am seeing a tank there. Um, let's try it out as the Allies this time. We played as the axis before and the victory conditions is the attacker must exit seven units from the map to win so i haven't done that yet in this game um but there's probably going to be like a a marked location that we need to reach all right let's try it axis going first i like the rain effects i would not expect that in a game like this and look at those tanks man look at those tanks <laughs> i'm a little concerned boys uh we've got a sherman though how are we? Wait a minute. We're playing with the British, but we have Shermans. Is that correct? Now, the question is, would the crews be British or would the crews be American? Lots of Panzers. Thomas von Arquin, I'm glad you asked that. Um, it, it is. I, I, I mean, I don't know what this game does better or worse, but I was mentioning that Lock and Load Digital and um, Wars Across the World are very similar gaming systems. In fact, when you start the game, it's actually called um, Valor, uh, excuse me, Valor and Victory, the World War II gaming system. So again, could probably expect some DLC coming out of this, maybe some Eastern Front stuff. That's at least what I typically see with this style of game. So it's the Allied Defensive Fire Phase, and incredibly, we can actually get a shot with our tank at this infantry unit. So we're gonna take it, but look at that. He's got plus three to fortification defense, plus two from the forest, and plus one, maybe a bunker defense. We're still going to take the shot, though. But no, actually, if we take the shot, we can't move. What am I talking about? Leave it and keep on moving. That's something I'm going to have to get used to is patience, number one, not taking the shot. So let's just wait. Now, it's the Axis advance and assault phase, but this allows us to move this turn, which we certainly want to do. Yeah, Eastern Front would be great. It really would. Okay. 
Okay, command phase. Um, do we want to split any units? Uh, we'll decide that on movement, actually, but I probably am not going to split them. Well, that goes to the fire phase. Right, we go from the fire phase to the movement. We're not doing anything for the fire phase, unless I can get a shot at the truck. And even then, I want to move. All right, so let's try to remain in cover. I just want to take a look here and see if we can see that exit location. So it's not really showing us where it wants us to exit. Um, hmm. I guess right there. Yeah, I see the British flag. Never mind. So it's got to be there. Um, so let's try and just remain in cover, pretty much. Also, we've got to kind of provide some cover for the tanks moving up the road. I doubt that they can just kind of go in the middle of nowhere, although these tanks are kind of in the middle of nowhere. So let's just try and use the cover as best we can. Yeah. Cobin. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm going to really be careful about this. So let's get the Shermans up. I want to make sure that I have, like, some foliage in between me and the other tanks. Yeah, I'm going to be careful about this. I'm, I'm leaving him there. I'm not moving him anymore. Like, once again, I'm just going to try to be really careful, approach this like I would from a real squad commander position. And I'm thinking, you know, we've got sort of this, like, scimitar-like shape that can obviously dish out some fire. But if we start spreading out too much, if we start putting tanks on the road, they can just destroy us piecemeal. We do have to keep in mind, though, they've got a lot of infantry moving up here. So we also have to have the firepower to back it up. Oh, nice. Nice. That's it. We're just going to keep them there. Like I said, I'm being very conservative with the movement. This way, the tanks can kind of form a shield and pretty much shoot in just about every direction. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, cheers, Artify. That's important to know. So we can shoot in the defensive phase. In other words... Um, we can still return fire if they get in front of us. I could have probably moved a little farther, but I'm trying to play it really, really careful here. All right. So it's the Allied Advance and Assault Phase. Yeah, we're not going to have to worry about that now. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that refers to attack values, right? So maybe the 131 is not exactly the strongest unit. Getting closer, boys. It's getting a lot closer. No, no, no. Oh boy. Oh boy. He missed. He missed, but that's pretty horrifying. Oh, hoo -hoo. return fire from our tank. No damage. More return fire. I like this placement of our tanks, though. Come on, baby. Oh, so damn close, boys. So damn close. Nice. Actually, pin the truck. Okay, their infantry is going to try to take advantage of this opening, but we've got to direct all fire at that tank. And I mean, if we can wipe out that bit of armor, I think we're going to be a lot safer here. So I might not move at all. I might just dish out damage this turn. Defensive fire. Now, I think we've already taken our defensive fire shots, if I'm not mistaken, against the tank. Um, we can probably still take defensive fire shots here with the infantry, though. And again, this guy has fewer fortifications in between. 
Um, this guy has quite a few, plus three from being in the wheat field, so let's open fire on him. Okay, we actually dished out some casualties. Pretty nice. This fellow's not going to be able to do any defensive fire. That's okay. We'll end that phase. Now the enemy can actually attempt to charge. I'm curious as to, like, how it works with them charging armor. Hey, Puro. How you doing, bud? So we do have to exit with, I think, eight units, maybe just three units. Uh, in fact, there's probably a way to take a look at the objective here. Maybe not. Either way, um, I'm thinking we should probably grab a few guys and continue heading north while focusing most of the fire on the units right here. So it is our fire phase. We should have quite a lot of chances uh, to do some serious damage. Playing some good old board game. That's right, man. Um, maybe we could take it out on the infantry. I don't think so. Got to get a hit. It's got to be a hit. No damage. This damn thing. <laughs> There we go, finally. We did manage to slice away that tank. Now they've just got the vehicle there. It's just like a little um, three-ton uh, truck. That's great. So allied fire phase, we could continue firing, but I'm thinking we probably want to reserve this infantry for movement. Yeah. Eh, then again. Are we ever going to see Steel Division on the channel? I've done Steel Division before. I think the issue with Steel Division and not with games like this is just, frankly, there's so many people covering Steel Division that I end up getting, like, under 500 views. I don't get a lot of views on it, and, you know, consequently, we don't really draw on any new people. Um, I, it always surprises me, like, when I play games like this that are pretty much ignored by other YouTubers, we get a lot of views, you know, and that... That helps me to want to remain on this path, you know what I mean? I'm always tempted to, like, change things on the channel. I think you guys saw that with, like, Arma kind of trying to do something new, and it just doesn't ever seem to work out, frankly. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and move on. So... Yeah, definitely going to push with the infantry. And again, because we have to escape... The funny thing is, he's actually leaving a Panzerkampfwagen there to make sure we can't escape with the infantry. I'm starting to see his planning here. So likely that enemy unit is going to want to charge right in and attack us. But now that we're not even in this location, I doubt that's going to be a problem. Yeah, we might end up taking a look on it. You know, we may, like especially for a live stream, I could definitely see myself playing it again. Defensive fire from the Axis. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> they've got those anti-personnel rounds loaded up, and they are just sending Craner straight to hell. So I wonder if we can do the advance and assault with a tank. No. Although we can kind of push up a little bit, so I'm not going to mess with it. Because a lot of the times, like, doing one thing such as movement affects another turn. So I'm not even going to mess with it. However, over here with Craner, if we just had enough movement points, we could easily advance and take a Nalp out. Kathy O'Keefe, 
you know, it's like I said at the be beginning of the stream, I think this is the kind of game that's gonna appeal to a very niche audience, you know what I mean? Um, and there are other games out there like this with a lot more DLC. Wars Across the World, Lock and Load Digital. It's been done, so for these guys to compete, they're gonna have to come out with some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, Thomas has nailed it. He's absolutely nailed it. This is this is a niche of a niche. It's very um, it's very case specific. You know, you've got to like World War Two. You've got to like war gaming. You've got to like strategy games. You got to like board games. See, for me, it only ticks off. Um, I only tick off three of those four. I'm not a huge fan of board games, so personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy this myself. I'm just talking for myself here. Um, this is not my kind of game. But if, like, for instance, a friend came over and he had an actual copy of this game and he's like, hey, Kev, you want to, you know, play this? I'd be like, well, first, are, are there any good movies on? And then if there aren't, I'd say, yeah, let's let's do let's play this. <laughs> um, it's cool. It's there's nothing wrong with it from my perspective. It's just you need to know what you're getting into. And you know, this is a board game. Very, very straightforward. It's a board game. Um, oh, look, we get we get some defensive fire here. You know what? I definitely want to throw everything I've got at nap. But we've got to move with some of these tanks. So I'm just going to fire with one. Oh, nice. Pinned and some casualty points inflicted. Uh, I don't have... Actually, I do have lock and load digital, but I've never played it. But I do have uh, wars across the world. And I think that one is pretty good. I mean, you can play everything from, like, um, what is it? I'm trying to think of just how far back. Like, Battle of the Boyne, um, as far, you know, as as recent as, like, Mali versus France. Stuff like that. Like, it's, it's pretty cool. Allied defensive fire phase. So that, again, is, is where uh, I think... <laughs> Um, people are going to be a little disappointed, Taffy. Um, there's, I thought there were more than this, but I think there's like, um, seven, five to seven for each side for one for the Americans, one for the British. There's no scenarios for the Germans. However, you can play as the Germans in any of the American or British scenarios. Um, so there's that bonus. And the other thing that I think is going to save it in that respect is it has a pretty robust scenario editor and creator, and that will allow, you know, the community to really build on this. Um, add some more scenarios, but I think it's going to come probably come down to DLC. A lot of these games rely on on DLC sales. Hey, Robert, how you doing, buddy? Ave, sir. Uh, good to see you. All right, defense fire phase. Yeah, baby. I like those low numbers. And again, you just have to look at that calculator to determine. It's not all about like rolling high numbers. It's all explained here on the actual calculator itself. Um, 19 to 28 is going to cause like certain amount of casualty points, etc. Uh, and it, again, it also depends on like what kind of unit is attacking what kind of unit. If we're using a tank to attack an, an infantry squad, this is going to be a little bit different as well. But I like that they show you. That way, like, nobody can complain about, like, oh, I, I think the dice rolls are off or something. I, I've, I've seen that happen in these sort of games where people kind of get annoyed with one another. Like, wait a minute, why why aren't why aren't my troops hitting yours? Well, I mean, you got bad luck, son. That's just the way <laughs> that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, let's hit Gruba here. Good old tan. And we did cause some casualty points. At least I, I heard something get destroyed. But it didn't pop up on screen, so it's a little confusing. Uh, defensive fire phase is over there, boys. Good work. Rallying up. But again, we've got that tank in the way. Good work. And it would be kind of foolish to get across this field with that tank looking at us. Um, so it's evident to me that we're going to have to move our armor up for sure.
Ooh, defensive fire already. Ooh, we're lucky, we're lucky. Um, I don't even think we necessarily need to get any closer. So I'm just going to do that. Remaining in the forest so that we get that cover bonus again. Oh, they got a, they have a damn pouncer post. We're okay, but um, we might want to kind of keep this guy over here. I'm going to keep him as a defensive uh, unit. Probably should have rotated to the left. When it said rotate to the right and it was pointed here, I thought it was going to be like, click. But it just completely did a 180. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. Um, no point in pushing with a tank looking right at us. And let's hope that the infantry doesn't get behind us. Craner's in trouble. All right, allied advance and assault phase. It's really nothing for us to do in terms of, of advance and assault, but maybe we could turn this guy around. Okay, that's, that's not bad. shooting them for the Germans. So I gotta give it to them. And a few of Poxon's crew are pinned. All right, it's our defensive fire phase. Fingers crossed, boys and girls. Good shooting. Good shooting. That's how you do it, folks. So we're making it through here. I've never done one of these escape missions, but I'm pretty sure we just get there and we click that button that says remove this uh, unit from the field. So for now, I'm just going to use this tank to kind of cover the retreat. So the Bino icon shows us um, like basically the LOS, the line of sight. Uh, we'll actually do it here for you. Click that. Click the unit, and this is kind of our line of sight. Um, we can, of course, change this if we, like, rotate or move to a new location. But see, even in a unit behind us, we can quickly turn and fire. And the line of sight for the infantry is well, pretty much just this area ahead. Get some! I'm not going to lie, it's not cheap. I would have priced it much cheaper. <laughs> That's just me. Um... There we go. And again, folks, um, a special thanks to our channel members. Those are folks that actually contribute some money every month to this channel. All we ask is three bucks a month to be a channel member. Um, that helps us buy all these games and again some of them very niche thankfully this one I received free from Slytherin games um, and as you can see I'm, I'm, I'm not being biased towards the game I'm giving you, I'm giving you guys my honest opinions um, it's not something that I'm terribly into but when I see you guys getting entertained and you enjoy watching it it makes you want to play more you know and there is a board gamey feel to it that makes it like not horribly boring but not particularly that fun either I'm kind of just like it's good to pass the time sort of thing, you know? Um, I think somebody mentioned this would be really good for, like, um, a phone-based game. Like, if you're stuck on a plane or you're stuck, you know, in a car, um, you know, in a very long uh, trip, something like that, I could see this being quite in quite enjoyable. 
Uh, each of the scenarios also has a little bit of history. Like if you look at the name of the commanders, we have spears for the American side. These are usually kind of heroes um, on, you know, from a squad perspective, they're heroes at least in real life. So that is something to keep in mind. That's pretty cool. Uh, allied defensive fire phase is over. Let's see if they try to charge. You're not touching this armor. Well, now I think we just need to move across as quickly as possible and get to the escape point. The only thing I want this tank to do is remain behind and provide covering fire. Yeah, baby. And a casualty point, point inflicted. All right, let's go to movement. Okay, we'll click that button. So that's one unit off. I think we need to get three, something like that. Boom. Oh! I thought we had completely pinned him, but it doesn't look like it. Robert Roberts says, I like these counter and dice games. Well, and evidently, so does the, the rest of the Agrippa Maxenius audience. Like, this is even doing better than our close combat stream uh, a few days ago, which was doing really well. So I'll keep playing them. Um, I, I do, I will say this. I prefer the Avalon Digital one specifically because there are there's a larger variety of conflicts. Like when I'm doing World War II, I play so much World War II stuff already that if you're going to throw me a WW2 game, I want something um, like Gates of Hell. I want something in your face, you know, extremely immersive, that sort of thing. Now, if this was like, you know, Spanish Civil War or any number of different unknown uh, conflicts like the Mexican-American War, I think it would be really great, really, really fun. And I'm sure maybe with the, uh, or not sure, but maybe with that scenario editor, you can also change like the countries and stuff. Maybe. We're just going to use the advance and assault phase to uh, steal a closer, a closer move here to the exit. Yeah, that's hard. To <laughs> yeah, I like your logic, Taffy O'Keefe. <laughs> It's hard to argue with you, and you're right. And um, I think Wars Across the World is also pretty inexpensive. Um, and you can essentially, you know, get Wars Across the World and then purchase one of the DLCs that interests you. So if you're interested in, like, um, well, the Israel, um, um, the Israel Arab States conflict, that conflict is in there. So there's a lot of different things. I think somebody else mentioned it. It may have been you, but what, what it's going to really come down to is the DLC they released for this and the price of that DLC. Good shooting. That's for defensive fire. Um, yeah, might as well. Firing as we run, of course. Not bad. We pinned a few of them. It's going to make it harder for them to kill us. And yeah, it's too far for defensive fire from there. Tank is going to remain here. Sorry, buddy. And let's see if we get any bonuses for how close we are. Yep. Movement phase is what matters, and we should have enough to, to get a victory. Damn. They don't want to less escape for sure. Had a few casualties, but the rest of them made it off the field. And I think that's enough for a victory. At least that's, that's what it said earlier. There we go. I like that 
music. That's gonna be the uh, the new Abrima Max Sentius outro right there. I like that. Uh, Sharpshooter says this looks a lot like Advanced Squad Leader. I haven't played that, um, but it sounds like similar. Okay, all right, guys. Well, that was a look at Valor and Victory there. Um, let's see, do you guys want to take a look? Maybe we can at least look at one of the other scenarios. Um, do we have any requests? In fact, what I'll do here is I'll go through the scenario so you guys can see what you're paying for. Um, now, keep in mind, it does have that scenario editor thing. I think that's really important because even if you're like, ah, that doesn't seem like enough, people are going to use this. They're going to create community scenarios, and you can play from there. Um, so let's go to new game. This is what you get for the Americans. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's not bad, all right? You also get like details on the order of battle, like exactly what you're gonna be getting in each fight. Um, so if you wanna, you know, play a battle with tanks, then you can kind of look until you find the tanks you uh, you wanted. Um, and of course, scenario details. Each one has like a nice little bit of artwork here. Um, you know, despite this, it might not seem like a huge deal to you, but this costs money. <laughs> it does cost money to the company. Um, and of course you can select either Axis or Allies. Now that's just the American scenario group. If we go over here to the um, British sector of the Battle of Normandy, they've got their own battles, but it looks like they only have nine, whereas the Americans may have 10. Um, fairly similar to, like, when you go down the battles list. So what the hell? Maybe we'll take a look at another one. Some epic music, indeed. Uh, let's see. So we just won this one, the counterattack at Ville Sec. Counterattack at Ranville. Uh, this allows us to actually attack with the German infantry and Panzer Grenadier units. I'm gonna try it out. So I'm actually gonna take the Germans for this one. Um, we're facing AT guns, we're facing some Red Berets, uh, aka British paratroopers. Let's check it out. Let's just see what they've got here. Oh, interesting. So it is based on the Advanced Squad Leader. That's good to know. Again, guys, please make sure to uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. I don't know. Uh, whatever you feel is right, uh, that does help us. And a commenting below helps us hugely. Okay. Guess there's no real fog of war in this fight. Yeah, there's no way we're going to be able to hit them from here. I'm pretty sure it does, um, but we did see hot seat earlier, and now I'm I, now I'm concerned it might not. So uh, <laughs> we might want to save here in a second. Let's just advance a little bit, get some shots with our tanks, and then we'll take a look. Um, but I'm pr I think it does have play by email. Most Slytherin games do. Return fire from the enemy AT gun immediately. My goodness, that was fast. Another shot. No damage, but getting awfully dangerous here. And again, what really saved us on that roll was the Defender in Woods modifier. So I'm not moving that tank any farther. He's staying right there. I also like when you click away from the tank, you can hear the uh, the driver turning off the engine. That's it's I don't you I don't typically use this word, but it's cute. It's a cute touch to a war game. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. If we go right across, paratroopers are probably going to eliminate us. So maybe we also need to advance across with the infantry from the woods. I think that's what we're going to do. We're likely to take some shots there on the road, but then again, the distance is quite great from their infantry. Do they have any sharpshooter units? Not that I could see. They've got Jack Edwards. My goodness. Isn't that crazy Jack, the guy that carried around a sword? Maybe I'm confusing him with somebody else. All right, let's put Klein out. Sending his squad over here. And I want to make it clear for anybody watching, this is like a group of units. You see, it's like a stack of squads. It's not just one. We have two other squads in this uh, in this group. And if we want to, we can separate them. So we could like send these riflemen to that area. But I want to keep these guys together. Like this is pretty decent. Um, numbers do matter. So like if we charge an enemy stack that had like, you know, eight or nine tiles and or squads we probably wouldn't win that one more than likely yeah so it, it must have pbm it must
Another question is how many times do they get that reaction shot? You see, we have multiple stugs. Of course, these are usually made for anti-tank operations. Um, well, maybe the Stug 3G actually uh, might be an anti-personnel weapon. Um, I've seen Tigers on the Hunt. I have not played it. It looks uh, really complicated. <laughs> I've seen it and it's terrified me because of its complexity. And you guys know this. I'm, I'm a simple man. I like just my World War II games. I like to you know, shoot a few German, uh, sorry, shoot a few uh, Nazis, rather, every now and again. <laughs> um, that's about it, you know. I'm not looking for, like, an ultra-complex um, game. I think that's the main reason I don't I don't ever tackle Command Modern Air Naval Operations. Again, just trying to remain on one side and hopefully out of range of the AT gun. And the fact is, she's not going to be able to shoot all of us. So that's another reason I've split them up here. We could, of course, keep these armor um, these armor squads in one group. But I don't think that's going to really help us. All right. We move directly to the assault phase. I also want to tell you guys, um, I typically don't like to, you know, involve you guys in channel drama, but I think this is important. Um, and that is this, like, just to give you guys an idea, YouTube has been cutting the views of our streams, our videos, to, to a dramatic extent. And um, I've been pretty much, like, putting together kind of records, video records and recordings of this, because it's pretty much, it's nonsense. Um, so this is how many playbacks we have gotten for this video. I want you guys to see this. 492 playbacks. Now, often a playback could mean that somebody watched the video left for a bit and then came back and that would be one playback not two right so you could say okay well that makes sense if it's like with 492 but then you upload it and it's like 400. what's what's happening now is youtube is cutting my views in half like when i upload it it cuts it in half uh you guys can be certain that when this video uploads it's probably going to be 250 views um, I just want you guys to be aware of that. Kind of like that's kind of the some of the bullshit uh, those of us on YouTube have to go through. It's uh, enraging stuff, you know, especially when you're doing this for as long as I've been doing it. When you can prove it and, and it doesn't matter, it's it's just annoying, you know. It's like, geez, uh, it's kind of like uh, fighting against a, a tidal wave, essentially. But I want you guys to see that number and then... Take note of that, and let's see what the actual upload count is. Now, Murphy's Law, it's funny if I upload it this time and it actually is 492, I'll be happy, but it typically is gonna, it typically is gonna be the exact half of that number. All right, let's push a little bit more. We're just trying to gain ground to get past the AT gun here, um, but I'm not gonna move into the street. There's no real benefit there. Keep it on, keep it going, keep it going, boys. And you know, I think with these units we'll stay put. How many shots are they gonna get is the question. Let's see. And I would guess they would target the SDKFCs first, because those are easier to penetrate. You just got to use the word pen when talking about war game. It sounds weird, doesn't it? Three, that'll be a hit. Yep. Those low numbers are great in this game. So that is a kill almost instantly. And it looks like they have additional AT guns there in the buildings. Pretty horrifying. Two Stugs killed almost instantly. We're going to have to return fire for sure this turn. And they immobilized one of our Stugs. So under the paratroopers there, they do have additional guns.
Let's see. Wow, so we can actually select targets. Now, this is fairly cool, and I don't see this in the other um, sort of digital board games. So we can either hit their six pounder four, their six pounder mark four. I guess one of these is high explosive, and one of these is armor piercing. We definitely want to get rid of the armor piercing gun. Yes, okay, guys. Nice, we actually destroyed one of the AP guns. Damn pulling streams. Yeah, man, I'm doing my best here. That was pretty nice. Uh, let's grab the SKKFC. And yeah, I think he's going to be able to open fire on the infantry here. Again, they get that fortification bonus of three and also the defensive bonus from the forest of one. And I've noticed this fortification bonus can change. So I'm guessing like certain locations are stronger than others. In this case, though, we do want to open fire on that area. And we're really looking for low rolls right now, like snake eyes. That's what we need. I'm going to do the same thing here. No, we can't get a shot from here, unfortunately. But it also means he can't see us, and I think it's because of these two wooded tiles. Okay, not too bad. I think that's it for the defensive fire phase. <clears throat> All right, not much we have to do on our command phase. I wonder if there's any way to fix this, but I don't think so. I think he's immobilized for the rest of the turn. But it could be an effect like pinned where he eventually fixes his vehicle and moves out of here. So let's get to the fire phase. This is what matters, is if we can kill some more of the enemy's guns. So we know they have guns underneath this para unit. Okay, we killed a gun. We did kill a gun. I think we did. Casualty points inflicted. It could have been a paratrooper, though. Uh, let's look. No, we killed a gun, guys. We got very lucky there. I'm going to keep targeting him with the SDKFC. We also can't ignore the fact that Jones has a large group here. And you know what? Since these guys are pinned, I'm actually going to um, move my fire over here. Try to kill another gun. It's definitely going to be underneath that paratrooper squad. Just take a look. Yeah, you see that? 17-pounder. She's a beast. Let's move over here. Just can't quite reach that guy, but we can reach Morto, which is one of the coolest names ever. And um, we should have fired at him last turn, but I didn't see that. We can also let an infantry squad out over here. We have to do that during the movement phase. Um, think about it. Um, yeah, that's going to be it. All right, movement phase. It's so dangerous during this fight as well. Let's just get Kleiner up to the woods. Um, these trees will actually protect us for another movement phase, so I'll leave them there. That's good enough. And... <clears throat> Try to get behind them with the SDKFC. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that is kind of strange. Airborne with a 17-pounder. It does seem like uh, it would take quite a lot more to move that, for sure. Yes! I hope this works. I'm going to reverse him a little bit as well. All right. And, of course, last but not least, Gruber and Lehmann. We did just take a shot. Is that just armor anti-personnel rounds? I think so. Ouch. One of our guys is pinned there. We're going to try not to worry too much about it and just proceed. 
I really want to get to that Axis fire phase and see if we can't wipe that gun out. Because I think, you know, it'll be a piece of cake if we can destroy the, um, the anti-tank stuff. Enemy defensive phase. They're sure to use those six-pounders against our tank, but let's see. No, they're going straight to the advance and assault phase. Well, our advance and assault phase... Alright, it looks like the Paras over here did rally. Snake Eyes will kill us for sure. Those are AP rounds in the six pounder. Not anti not armor piercing, but anti-personnel rounds. Because they just hurt Kleinert. But it looks like we also just dealt some um some damage to the para unit and potentially wiped out the gun here too. Let's take a look. First it's their move phase, but I could take a quick look. No, the 17 pounder is still there. Yes, exactly. That's possible. Yes, we got him, boys. Another AT gun destroyed. Now they just have one. I think this, make, this makes things a little easier for us. Uh, let's also take Kleinart and open up on the Brits over here under Morto's command. But before I do that, um, I'm going to just go ahead and open fire with this unit. The infantry and the SDKFZ. Get a double shot here. Probably have a few more shots from over here as well. Yep, look at that. Uh, targeting the 17-pounder gun once again. Yeah, the distance here is too great. What about over here? Yep. Yeah. Let's see if they try to advance here on Morto, or excuse me, on Kleinert with Morto. Doesn't look like it. Also, Kleiner rallied, which is even better. Here we go. So I'm going to fire at Jack Edwards' unit here. Going for those EP shots. Nice. Um, and with Kleiner, I'm going to do the same thing, but I typically support him with the SKKFC fire over here. Um, one more shot here. Now he can't fire Jones either. All right, let's fire here. Nice. A little bit of damage. Not too much. And with the SKKFC, we're targeting that unit as well. But um, unfortunately, we don't have a visual there. I thought we, we certainly did. It's not the case. see him look how my steam chat doesn't work when it's supposed to that's great Somebody message Pixel on uh, Discord and let him know we're streaming it. <laughs> okay. Proceeding forward with infantry, of course. 
but as for our movement phase at this point i feel like we can kind of um kind of take our time a little bit we do still have that 17 pounder to worry about but i think just continually firing from the edges of the map here we're eventually going to wipe them out so you have to keep in mind though if you look at jack edwards group and jones group these are large stacks could hold quite a few units so let's proceed there Hey, how you doing, Pix? Good to see you, man. I think this is our best performing stream this week. We had um, at 1.33 uh, viewers, which is, at least in the last few months, our best. And I was discussing those numbers with Pixel um, yesterday. So, Pixel, if you want to see the playbacks for this one, here are the playbacks for this one. 582. Let's just see what the uploaded count is, and then tell me if something isn't going on. All right. Axis advance and assault phase. I am certainly going to take advantage of this now. We're going to try to get more toe out of here. Very low numbers. As you guys could see, that worked out in our favor, unbelievably. We did lose a few guys. Um, the attackers lost their five, which I would consider, you know, unnecessarily high losses, but we took the position. So that's going to be under our control there. And I'm just going to use this as an opportunity to advance my men into cover. I might even be able to advance with the STKFC, but I think I want to stay put. Took a few casualties. No worries, though. No worries at all. They're going straight to defensive fire phase. They really are trying to knock us down before we become a problem. Um, all right, it's our defensive fire phase. Let's see if we can actually spot this guy. We can. And again, we're trying to take out that 17 pounder. It's a pretty nice roll too. It's open fire on Jack Edwards. Am, am I mistaken here? Is this not the guy that walked around with a sword? Isn't it crazy Jack? There we go. A little bit in terms of casualties. Not many, unfortunately. And now I'm going to focus on Jones here. Because with that large stack, we need to try and... um sort of minimize the amount of men he's got here as quickly as we can. All right. Killed one and pinned one. I'll take it. And I'm going to open fire again on their gun. If we have a shot on that gun, we're going to take it every time. Instead of, you know, risking ourselves by moving forward, I, I think we just take it. And that's going to be it. Movement phase. So it's our advance and assault phase. Yeah, we're not going to be advancing or assaulting anywhere right now. Keep the fire going, boys. Ah, Mad Jack Churchill. So this is a different uh, Jack kind of getting excited there i was like oh they've got some some interesting characters in the game but they do have interesting characters in the game they really do like i said commander spears that's that's just fascinating that they have that nope access fire phase might as well and now we can fire from this location but again we are missing i'm it's not going to stop me from shooting though because this is a huge threat as long as our tanks can remain alive, we can remain at distance, shoot at their infantry. But if that AT gun remains alive, he's going to start knocking our tanks down one by one. And I don't want that. That's a hit. Yep. We're just killing like one squad member at a time. 
All right, let's take the STK of Z. Again, we've just got this enemy group surrounded, completely surrounded. I mean, they could charge out across the field here if they want, but it's not looking very good for these guys. Yeah, only soldier to score a kill using a bow and arrow. Exactly. Now, there are some pretty insane stories, and I don't, I can't vouch for their validity, but there are some pretty insane stories involving some of the Native American troops uh, fighting on the American side, and they would do some pretty crazy stuff, too. Um, not necessarily involving bows and arrows, but I've heard of scalping and things like that. Uh, that certainly occurred. Now, Lemon has a pretty imposing group. I'm going to keep them like that. They sort of match Jones's group, and I'm content to just fire across the way for a while until we get some armor in here. But they do have a defensive fire phase. Let's see if they decide to target us here. Target our infantry specifically. Ooh. They got the SDKFC. And again, those low numbers are good. They really are. So I'm just going to advance one tile. Even with Kleinert. AT gun is still killing vehicles on our side. Unbelievable. Looks like he's leaving that 17 pounder to fend for himself or potentially just trying to get in the way of our armor. Uh, because again, if they put a unit, a tiled unit in front of that gun, we have to destroy that unit first. So let's take Kleinert. Defensive fire. Well, keep firing at Jack Edwards. Load anti-personnel rounds. Yeah, baby. We're going to break through eventually. Fire. Insanely brave. Yeah, absolutely. And also on the, um, the Pacific Theater as well. Not just the... Uh, not just the Western Theater. Now, this is defensive fire, guys. I want you to keep that in mind. It's not um, our fire phase. Because, again, if you fire first, um, you can't move during the move phase. This is just our defensive fire phase. Maybe one more shot over here with the busted up tank. All right, it's the allied advance and assault phase. If they decide they want to try to charge us, maybe get rid of some of our infantry, this would be the time to do it. But that's another reason I kept these guys on this side of this river. It's going to be pretty tough for the guys to charge across here and for it to be successful. I think we should just hold our position pretty much and fire away. Anti-personnel, fire... That's a hit. That's going to be a hit. No. Wow. So we do have to go for the lower numbers. It's going to be just Snake Eyes uh, to hit the uh, Jack Edwards group in the building there. Buildings are very useful for uh, defensive operations, of course. I think that's a safe bet, Taffy. I think that's definitely a safe bet, yeah. Got another one. Ooh. 
very risky but i am going on a, i'm going for a charge against jack edwards unit unfortunately he's pinned uh the infantry squad we sent across still gonna try to move with this unit and actually just add him to lemon squad That's really unfortunate, Pixel. So, you know, we were talking about earlier about the possibility of using the scenario editor here to jump into different wars, maybe rename certain units. Um, it looks like, yeah, that might not be allowed. So it's just what's available here. I, I understand. Okay. We do have an advance. Um, we are getting to the end of the stream. I'm going to go for it. Now, of course, if I could charge the 17-pounder, I would, but that's not an option here. Uh, so we are going to charge into the building here with Kleiner. Enemy has more men here than we do. Yeah, it's not going to go well. Uh, defenders lost just one. Attackers lost just 13. So, of course, we lost quite a lot of men here. Uh, I will advance with our armor here. Just get a little bit closer and get our final shots out. But I do want to thank everybody for stopping by. It was fun looking at this game. This is, again, typically not my style of game. But I could certainly see how it could appeal um, to some folks. And... I think we'll be back here. I do. Um, again, there are many different kind of um, games like this. You've got, of course, the lock and load digital games. You've got the Wars Across the World games from Astratege and Avalon Digital. Um, so I would recommend for sure, like, look at those first before you do an impulse buy on this one. Because I will say, like, the price is a bit, it's a little high for a game like this. You know, you're paying 20 bucks or more. Um, yeah, I would, I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Um, it really comes down to how much you like this specific genre. We can see that there are a lot of people here that do really enjoy it. And if you're one of those people, then of course, you know, this is the game for you. All right, let me get my final shots off. Hold on now. Oh yeah, that's trying to, they're trying to advance on us. Let's fire. And evidently the attackers have an anti-personnel flamethrower. We just killed three of them uh, to make sure they don't get to this tank. Cause a flamethrower can certainly take a tank out. Fire into the building. Good shot. So that's how many units they have at that location. And that's just by right clicking, you know, just kind of right click. You could hold it, have a look. Okay. All right, guys, I want to thank everybody for stopping by the stream. Probably once again, our most successful of the year. Um, 651 playbacks, um, but I want you guys to, to help me out here. Keep an eye on that as well and see if uh, YouTube is being honest here. You know, 651 playbacks. Let's see what that translates to in views. Nonetheless, you guys were all here. Um, definitely had fun kind of showing you guys this game and, uh, you know, make your own decision. Don't make an impulse buy, but if it's your thing, like I said, maybe you can go ahead and pick it up. Let's see. It's a bit less narrowly focused compared to Yobo's earlier games. Oh, interesting. And that's right, it is based on the original board game, uh, Valorant Victory. So if you're a fan of Valorant Victory, you're gonna like this. Take care, Bostova. I, his name is Bostova. Well, it's not, his real name is not Bostova, but I call him that. Uh, Icon Rostov. Um, he's also one of our channel members. That's why he gets that awesome Agrippa emblem next to his name. So again, guys, um, you know, YouTube's certainly not, not doing us any favors. If you want to help us out, um, you know, personally, that helps tremendously by becoming a member. Uh, thank you so much. I'll catch you on the next one. And maybe we'll come back to this. In fact, now that I know you guys like this genre, I'll, I'll make this promise. I can't promise we'll come back to this particular game, but there's some pretty cool DLC for Wars Across the World um, that's come out recently. And I think I want to jump into that and maybe play around with that a bit on a stream. If you guys think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments down below after the video is uploaded that you want to see more of this genre of game and we will make it happen. All right, folks, thank you so much. See you on the next one. Oh, and subscribe if you're new. Take care, my friends.